Football helmets. Do you know what your child is wearing? This is the 1883 Navy football team. A notable team in the history of football because of this man right here, Joseph M. Reeves. After a physically brutal season, Reeves' doctor told him that one more hard hit to the head could possibly lead to what he referred to as instant insanity, or even death. Determined to play in the traditional rivalry game against Army, Reeves went to a local shoemaker and had him fashion a moleskin hat with ear flaps. And that's what would become the first helmet in football history. Now that you know the brief history of where football helmets came from, how are they tested? Who are the players involved in this process? Noxy, NERA, SEI, the NFHS, and the football helmet manufacturers. Let's start with NOXI. NOXI is the National Operating Committee on Standards for Athletic Equipment. On their website, they say they are an independent and nonprofit standards development body with the sole mission to enhance athletic safety through scientific research and the creation of performance standards for athletic equipment. In 1970, they were formed to commission research directed toward injury reduction. They developed an initial standard in 1973, and their initial testing found that 84% of the used helmets failed this standard. A second standard was developed in 1977, was published, and provides guidelines for the recertification of helmets by reconditioners. Noxie does not perform any of the actual helmet testing. It performs the research and development of the standards utilized for product assessment. Until 2015, Noxie permitted the manufacturers of the helmets to test their own, own newly constructed helmets. But in 2015, they decided to partner with a third party to validate the manufacturer's testing. Who is that third party? That third party is called the Safety Equipment Institute. Again, in 2015, Noxy partnered with SEI, and SEI is the organization that communicates directly with the manufacturers of the helmets for the certification of their products. The manufacturer sends their in-house testing results to SEI, and SEI checks these results and retests and certifies the helmets to the performance requirements specified by the NOXI standards. SEI provides the manufacturer with a letter of certification which certifies their product. SEI is responsible for making the claim that the product is compliant with the applicable product specifications, and SEI is the organization that maintains the list of currently certified products. SEI also maintains a legacy product list. A product is moved to the legacy list when the manufacturer determines that they are no longer going to produce that model. That product is still covered by the previous certification assessment. If the product is found to be non-compliant at the time the manufacturer withdraws it from the market, it will not be found on either list. The legacy list is there to provide information to customers who are buying products that are new, unused, and are no longer being manufactured. You can find this list at that link. Go to Noxy, go to Football, and then go to Football Helmets. Then there's the organization of reconditioners called NERA, or the National Athletic Equipment Reconditioners Associations. NERA, again, National Athletic Reconditioning Association, they test used helmets which need to be recertified. There are currently 12 NERA recertifiers that remain in the United States. The term reconditioning means the inspection, cleaning, sanitizing, repair, and restoration of athletic equipment to the original performance standard of that equipment. Recertification is the reconditioning and then testing and proper labeling of the athletic equipment that has previously met the NOXI standard and recertification standard. What does this look like? Well, helmets and shoulder pads are placed in bags ready to be reconditioned. They're put on racks, face masks, decals, and all the hardware are removed. Internal parts are inspected and removed to be cleaned. Helmet shells are inspected for defects and tested for any cracks. 
any helmet found defective is rejected, then the helmets are buffed or sandblasted, the helmets are washed, helmets are painted, the components have then been washed and dried, all the internal components are inspected and tested with air liners inflated prior to reinstallation, the Noxy drop test is performed on a representative sample, not every helmet, but a representative sample before and after reconditioning. Yes, I do not know what a ref representative sample actually means in terms of numbers or percentage of the helmets. Face masks are reattached with new hardware. Recertified helmets have new stickers placed inside and outside that say that they meet the Noxy standard. Helmets are then bagged and boxed and shipped back to the customer. Noxy standard, Noxy testing and recertification process for football helmets. Again, this is very, very important. It is recommended and Noxy recommends every one to two seasons. As of 2018, both Noxy and Nera recommend biennial every other year helmet recertification. Only the state of California requires annual certification. There are no state laws that require a high school football helmet or any youth football helmet for that matter to be recertified or reconditioned with any particular frequency. Every state association playing under NFHS or the National Federation of High School Sports Associations rules, so any state association that plays under those rules, and all 50 states in the District of Columbia do play under those rules, they have adopted the NOXI standards. In 2017, NOXI put into effect a standard that says helmets intended to be recertified have a recertification interval that is provided by the manufacturer and the certification life is limited to this time period. Helmets not recertified during the stated interval shall no longer be certified, and the recertification interval required for warranty validation shall satisfy this requirement. Only companies licensed by Noxie, meaning NERA members, may perform the reconditioning and provide recertification. Zena Shutt, Riddell Adams, all manufacturers of football helmets strongly recommend that every football helmet should be reconditioned annually, but not less than every two years by a company which is licensed by Noxy. Riddell states that failure to have the helmet reconditioned a minimum of every two years by a Noxy licensed reconditioner voids the manufacturer warranty. The helmets that meet Noxy standards must have a seal that says meets Noxy standards and a logo for that type of helmet. Both the logo and the seal must be permanently branded or stamped on the outside rear portion of the helmet. Additionally, all Noxy certified football helmets must have a standard warning label attached to the inside or outside of the shell of the helmet that tells the safety and proper use of the helmet. Riddell says failure to have the helmet reconditioned at least every two years by a Noxy licensed reconditioner will void the warranty. Shutt says in order to honor the shell warranty after the first year of use, reconditioning by a NERA certified reconditioner is required every other year. The CDC says football helmets should be replaced no later than 10 years from the date of manufacture. Many helmets will need to be replaced sooner depending on wear and tear. And for middle school football and all of youth football, meaning under high school age, neither Noxie nor Nira provide a reconditioning requirement, but they recommend annual reconditioning. Noxie is now requiring the third party certification as we discussed from the Safety Equipment Institute. So you can see the labels that must be on a helmet. What does this actually look like on the helmet? Well, here's the embossed label, as was discussed, but some still may have a stick-on label. Um, you should definitely look for the embossed label on the left that says SEI certified meets Noxy standards. You will also notice that next to that there is a sticker that says initial season. That is when the helmet was manufactured, so that means the 2017 helmet. For 
reconditioned and then recertified helmets, they must have a sticker which says recertified meets NOXI standard with the year and the recertifier name. So on the right, you see a helmet that says initial season 2017. It was recertified in 2018. It meets the NOXI standard and it was recertified by a NERA member. All critical things that must be on this recertified sticker. If it doesn't have that, it has not been recertified or not been recertified properly. So who keeps the records? Well, the reconditioners, and I've spoken to three of them, say that they keep the detailed records of every helmet they recondition and who worked on the helmet and the reconditioning date. Does the school or school system keep these records? Well, you must check with your local school and school system, but unfortunately, that answer is doubtful. So, my own son's helmet. Now, this video is being recorded in October of 2020. My son came home with a helmet that said initial season 2017. There are no recertification stickers on the helmet, as you can see in the helmet on the left. You can see that the helmet is also pretty banged up. So I contacted the coach and sure enough, there was a 2020 helmet in the proper size that he was able to provide for my son. This helmet is a new helmet, says initial season 2020. It's a different model. It's a better quality helmet. You must be that parent. I must repeat that. You must be that parent. You must advocate for your child if you're going to let your child play football, it is your child's brain. You just must be that parent. It's unfortunate, but that's the way it is. Had I not asked, he would have played a season with a 2017 helmet that was never properly checked. That could be disastrous. Now, when it comes to helmets, you must also make sure it's fit properly. So I asked my son about that. He said none of the coaches made sure the helmets fit properly. So here is a graphic from the National Athletic Trainers Association that goes over the general components of helmet fit. That being said, you must check the manufacturer's website for the video or guidelines that they publish. So if it's a shut helmet, if it's a Zenith helmet, if it's a Rydell helmet, watch the manufacturer's video and make sure your child's helmet fits properly. No good to have a great helmet and if it doesn't fit properly and it's loose and spins all over the place, that doesn't do your child much good. So please make sure that your helmet fits properly and again, be that parent, ask the coach to fit the helmet properly. Be safe.